I found that there's actually another way to do autobiographical comics, and that is I don't always have to make the main character look like the real me. I learned this from reading A Drifting Life by Yoshihiro Tatsumi. It's a thick volume based on his real life, about his journey from being a wannabe manga artist to an established manga artist. In the book, he uses the character called Hiroshi to represent him, and it probably doesn't look like him in real life. You could say he used an avatar to play his part, or a variant, you know, like in the Marvel Universe. But the events are still true to his life experiences, and some of them are pretty personal. So if you feel that your story is pretty personal, or the topics are pretty sensitive, this technique can create some distance between you and your story. Because then you can say, yeah, it happened to my character, instead of, it happened to me. And here's another reason why you might want to disguise yourself in your autobiographical comics. In my story, Giggly Floating Fish, I changed myself to this alternate reality person. And this is my wife in her alternate reality version. I also changed the whole setting from Singapore to this other universe. Why? Because it would make the story look a lot more interesting than if I told it with my ordinary everyday life setting. So here's the comic and I'll tell you my real story over my alternate reality version, okay? In my real life, I heard about this very special pen that my then favorite artist was using. I saw it on his blog post or something. I really wanted that pen, but every shop I called or visited, art friends, straights art, kinokuniya, stationery stores, they all didn't have it. They would say we used to have it, but we sold out and we don't carry it anymore. And some shops wouldn't even know what I was talking about. And it made me want the pen even more. So I continued hunting, and finally I called the pen office. And they said that they had it, but I realized that their office was in a far-flung industrial estate. After that, I couldn't sleep at night thinking about that pen. The pen could produce lines that other pens couldn't, and that's why I wanted it so badly. I would look at online reviews during the day while I was working. I couldn't stop thinking about it. I had to get it ASAP. Weekend came and my wife and I got into our van, and we set off to find this pen office in this faraway industrial estate. My wife was pretty understanding of my crazy hunts for art tools. And she does try to help me keep things sensible. We travel on long, unfamiliar highways. And taking wrong turns, we got lost along the way. We got back on track and we got closer and closer to the office. And then I found it, the source of the pens. As I got closer and closer to the reception counter, I got more and more excited. I felt that this pen was going to change my life. I bought the pen and finally it was in my hands. I brought the pen back and I showed my Urban Sketcher friends what the pen could do. And many of them wanted one too. But soon after getting the pen, the excitement quickly died down and I was hunting down other pens. And that special pen that I wanted so much was just left at home with my older pens and other art tools that I also once wanted so badly. And that's how the story ends. So as you can see, I've kept the story the same and I've changed the item, how the main character looks, and the setting. At its core, it's still autobiographical. The theme and message in the hunt for material goods, the excitement quickly disappears once you have them. And by the way, the pen I was hunting down, it was the Pilot Parallel Pen. Hmm, I should start using this again. And this was my favorite artist at the time. I've disguised myself in several of my other comics as well, and here are some of them. These are all autobiographical. I think doing autobiographical comics this way can be pretty fun and also perhaps rather freeing. Try it out for yourself. Hope you find this helpful and thanks for watching.